thank you everybody for being here. This is a great opportunity on a Monday night to start the week out in a great way. And it all comes from and brought to you by P10. It's the new brand for my Take Charge of Your Productivity program. It's now called P10, the Productivity Accelerator. And I'm super excited with this new brand because it's really fun and really awesome. And tonight, we're going to be talking about getting in the zone. So, you know, if any of you are runners or athletes, you know, runners talk about this runner's high, right? Being in the zone, athletes who perform getting into that zone. Well, the fact is, is we all know that zone. It's that productivity zone. What is it? You know it. You've had it before, right? It's that time where you just, you have a day where things just zip by, right? You get, you're getting thing after thing done and it feels effortless, and, and you're, you know, by midday or the end of the day, you're surprised at how much you got done. And it felt like you got more done in that day than you have in an entire week. Have you ever felt that way? I know I have. And I know I've also had those crazy days, right? Where you're the same end of the day, the same amount of time, exact same amount of time. And you felt like, oh my God, where did the day go? What did I do today? And you just felt like you got nothing done. And, uh, and so we've all had those days too, right? So what's the difference? If we're talking about the same eight hours of time, what's the difference? Well, the difference is us getting into the productivity zone. And I talk about it in terms of energy management because it's not about the time itself because the time was the same. We had eight hours. But what was different is the energy that we brought to that time and the way that that time was utilized. So, and I like to call this productivity zone, it's where efficient and effective meet. And, you know, I kind of call that it's, it's aligning the benefit to the investment. Does that make sense? Aligning the benefit to the investment. So let's take a look at a framework because I love to use frameworks because I think visuals help people to put things into perspective. So I'm going to ask you to look at the bell curve in a completely different way. So throw away whatever you knew of the bell curve before. This is different. We're just using the picture as a framework for us to see efficient on the upper scale uh, and across we see the effective scale. And in the center there, in those center points, is where our productivity zone is. This is what I call the productivity curve. So the productivity curve then has those parts on the side. What are those parts? Well, those parts, they are where stress lives. Does anyone know about stress? Come on now, we live in a society where stress, they, they say that stress is causing, um, it's costing businesses over $300 billion. I mean, the World Health Organization has declared stress a worldwide epidemic. It is a serious issue, and it's because people aren't aware of what it takes to get into that zone, that productivity zone. And it doesn't only mean creating, it also means balance. Because as I said, it means aligning the benefit to the investment of whatever it is that you're doing. And it's finding that balance. So what is it on the stress area? Well, what it is on those two sides are the evil twins, procrastination and perfectionism, right? And we're going to go into more detail into that because we've all experienced it in some shape or form. Even though our goal is to live in the productivity zone, it doesn't mean that we don't go to those other zones because we're human, or at least I know that I am. So the key is, is how do we get back to that productivity zone as quickly as possible? How do we take charge of our productivity, which is what I've been teaching? So let's take a look at procrastination. Any procrastinators out there? You can raise your hand, but nobody can see you, so it's okay. <laughs> so the definition of procrastination, and I looked these up just to get the, make sure I was being specific, is the action of delaying or postponing something. And I thought this was interesting as a definition because the definition says an action. So it, it really is an action if you think about it because – you know, it's like when you make a decision, even when you make no decision, it's still a decision. So we're, we're taking that action, that choice of delaying or postponing something. 
And some examples of that are, you know, like making decisions or taking a specific action that needs to be taken, starting something or even completing something. And I, I don't know about you, but a lot of times, you know, that procrastination will, will set into place when it's something that I really, I, I really don't want to do or I'm dreading doing, right? So there, there's a lot of reasons why we procrastinate. We procrastinate because maybe we're lacking clarity. Maybe there's a lot of clutter and confusion that's going on that's resulted in you not being able to start something or make that decision. I, I know that happens with me when there's a lot of clutter around. A lot of times I don't know where to start. I have to clean, clean up the clutter. And it's all relative, right? My clutter might be different than your clutter. But uh, and overwhelm. Overwhelm is something that, that stops people in their tracks. Is when people feel overwhelmed, then they have the inability to, to function because that's what stress does, right? All of these things are causing stress, right? And, um, and what stress does is it, it affects our ability to actually come up with solutions and to think clearly. Because basically when our emotions are high and stress is, is doing that, then our intellect is low. So that's something that we really want to be wary of because we want to take our place if we are lacking clarity or, or uh, in the worst case, <clears throat> having this overwhelm, is we need to be able to take ourselves out of that emotional state and be able to deal with that. And that's something that, that my program deals with because it's an important part of your productivity is being able to manage your emotional triggers and your stress that are all part of what's um, really keeping you from your productivity. What do you think are the basis for a lot of these elements? What do you think is the basis? Fear. Fear is a lot of the basis of procrastination, the core, the root cause of why. We may be lacking clarity because we don't, once we get clear, we're going to have to make a step that we're afraid of, that's unknown. Fear of success, fear of failure, um, a lot of times that's what we're, we, we kind of almost sabotage ourselves so that we don't have that clarity, that we create that clutter and confusion so that we don't have to deal with some of the, uh, those, those core issues. Now, I want to talk about the psychology behind this because we're going to talk more about that when we talk about being in the zone, that there's four things that make up championship psychology in the P10 Productivity Accelerator program. And when we think of it in the context of procrastination is, well, the first one is purpose. Well, when we're procrastinating, typically we have a weak purpose. Is we're not clear, that, that's where the lack of clarity comes in. And we're not really connected to whatever that purpose is. So even if it is clear, we're not connected at the moment. We don't associate that particular task having anything to do with our goals and, and something that's important to us. The second thing is language, our self-talk. We have this defeatist self-talk and attitude, and um, it's really something that we may not even notice, but we're telling ourselves, oh, you know, I can't get that done in time or whatever it is that is, is going on in your head that you're telling yourself is typically on the defeatist side when you're procrastinating. I mean, tell me if that's true, right? Am I right? I know you're all shaking your heads there, even though I can't see you. And then focus is the third area. And that's really, you know, we're, where we focus is what we get. So it's interesting that the focus is directed at the negative. So when we're procrastinating, we're, uh, we're avoiding, we're looking for something else to do. Or we're, you know, we're deciding to shift our focus somewhere else because we don't want to focus on that particular thing. We allow ourselves to easily be distracted. And you know, what we focus on is what we get. So if we focus on the distractions and allow ourselves to be taken in those different places, then we will. And if we allow ourselves to be defeated by our language and we're focusing on that negative language, then we're going to get more of that. Does that make sense? And physiology, well, interesting enough, for procrastination, it's usually a part of the avoidance or excuse. Oh, I'm hungry, I'm going to go have something to eat, right? Is that one of the things you do to uh, distract yourself? Or, you know, I need to go take a walk, I feel tired, right? We use our physiology in that way to use it as, as our excuse of why we're not going to get ourselves focused and get ourselves geared. 
I mean, how many of you say, you know what? I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks right now and get my energy up so that I can focus clearly on the task at hand. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. Although I do know Dr. Isaac Jones, awesome guy, is that when he's at the airport and he's bored um, and waiting for the plane, he does push-ups and headstands and things like that. So, you know, there are some, some great things that you can do with your physiology instead of using it as an excuse and use it as a driver to help you focus. But these four things, and we're going to talk about that later, purpose, language, focus, and physiology are what we're going to need to turn around in order to get quickly out of procrastination and into the productivity zone. So again, if you have any questions, I do have everybody on mute right now. Uh, save your questions until the end or send me an email. I'm just going to bring my email up here in case anybody sends me an email or type something into, into the chat. So let's carry on. So let's do a little exercise because we've all been to that place where we procrastinate from time to time. So I want you to think of what are the top two things that you tend to procrastinate on? The top two things. And you can make in your paper that I told you to get with your pen and paper, I made you up a little table here that you can make. So what is it that you're procrastinating on? What's the core driver? Is it fear? You know, try to get to the core of what it is. Is it a lack of clarity? What, what is it specifically? And how is it affecting you? And what are the consequences and the price that you're paying for procrastination? I mean, seriously, not just the price that you're paying for yourself, that maybe you feel stressed and embarrassed that you're late in delivering something or, or just on time and getting it in. But what about the other people that are affected? If you're working in a team, you know, what about, um, you know, have you let them down when you're late? Did you miss an important deadline? Or did you barely make it and maybe they don't, you might think that they don't think as highly of you. What, what are the things, you know, how are they regarding you? What are the consequences of your relationship? Do they trust you to give you that next project like that? And what could help you gain clarity and eliminate the fear? So what's the new action that you're going to take or the new awareness that you have that you're going to do things differently? So go ahead and write down those top two things where you tend to procrastinate because awareness is power. Remember that. So you can't make a change until you are aware of it. So when you know, hmm, now that I think of it, it's these two things that I procrastinate on, then you can really get to understanding what's at the core that may be connected with some other unwanted behaviors that you might be experiencing. I'm just saying. So I'll give you a second to write that down, and I'll just pop in a throat lozenge or have a sip of water. Great, you're doing great. So we're gonna move on. You can always come back to that and complete that exercise. So coming back to the productivity curve, as we said, that, that zone um, is your peak productivity. And over to the right-hand side, <clears throat> as we said, is the ugly stepsister of procrastination is perfectionism, right? And a lot of people think, you know, perfectionism is okay, right? Because, uh, you know, that's pushing me harder to achieve success. And typically people who have more perfectionism behavior, they tend to be successful. They tend to be productive in a way. But the question is, what is productivity as a definition? It's not uh, being in a state of stress. It's not a place of lacking balance. It's not earning lots of money but not being happy, right? It's having that balance, as I said again, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it for potentially a couple times, it's aligning the benefit to the investment. And in that creates balance. I call this zone the just one more thing zone. And I have to tell you, um, you know, even after I started with this program and these, these 10 essential elements were so clear and it's the way I, I, I really live my life and, and getting back into the zone. <clears throat> However, uh, there's a couple times when I was what you would say overproductive and caught in that just one more thing. And that's kind of my struggle is back and forth is dealing with that just one more thing. 
And so I want to tell you a little story, if I may, is that, uh, you know, I, I started to show up late for things. And it was a little distressing. <clears throat> and first, I didn't really notice, and it didn't really bother me. But then I started to think about it. And I showed up one day at my gym with my personal trainer, uh, Dwayne Wimmer, Wimmer, who's uh, from Vertex Fit. He's amazing. Um, and uh, I remember... I remember coming in a couple minutes late and thinking, wow, I wouldn't want someone to show up late for my session. I would think that that was rude and a, sh and a sign of lack of respect if it happened on a consistent basis. Even though I might tend to call him and let him know I'm going to be late or whatever, I've got to account for traffic. I've got to account and leave in enough time to make sure that I'm there so that I can do my warm up and be ready to go when it's time to go. He has a schedule to keep and so do I. And so when I, when I really connected in with that and realized that I was breaking a value that was so very important to me, which was respect and showing respect for others. And when I thought about that he may feel disrespected by my behavior, well, I really felt bad. I really felt bad because I was just getting that one more thing in. So, and that was providing me to be late. So that was an eye opener for me to really see that it's not just how it affects me, it's how it affects other people. And so really think about it. Is it really, if you're in that perfectionism zone, you know, is it really effective? Because remember the Pareto principle, you know, with the 80-20 and you're spending a lot of extra time and effort on that last 20%. And the question, is it worth the investment? And what is it that you're having to sacrifice to put the time and energy into that? Because that's what happens in this zone, is we compromise some of our other values. And so we really want to be aware of that. And, and you know, it's, it's also, it's robbing us of the opportunity to appreciate our progress. And, you know, because a lot of people in this, in this zone, in the perfectionism zone, they're just off to the next thing. You know, whether they're, um, you know, if they're students, they might be chasing that A, and it's all about, you know, getting all those A's, and they never stop to appreciate the work that they've done and, and celebrate their success at all. So it just almost feels monotonous, and that's how people end up not being happy and fulfilled, because they don't take the time to kind of smell the roses, feel that balance, and appreciate their success. Maybe it's chasing as an adult, chasing that promotion. Whatever it is, it's something really to think about and it's the same thing when we're chasing time. It's not about time. It's about how you manage your energy. So perfectionism, <clears throat> as a definition, is a personality trait that's characterized by a person striving for flawlessness, setting excessively high performance standards, and extremely overly critical in their self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluations. So it's not just that, that flawlessness, right, that, that search for perfection. And high standards, believe me, high standards are good. Again, it's to understand where high standards uh, make sense and are absolutely necessary. And, and I, I perform to high standards, and I hold others to high standards. And I believe that that's, that's a good thing. And it's, it's a matter of how all these things fit together. So why perfectionism? Well, you know, that's why... Procrastination and perfectionism are, are kind of aligned in the context of is they're both fear based is the root cause of probably 80% of both perfectionism and procrastination are are stemming from fear fear of failure um, you know they might be in the position of, of performing at that level to avoid blame or judgment or any kind of shame uh, a lot of times performance is tied to the self-worth of that person. And they're often seeking social approval. I don't know if any of this is, is sounding familiar to any of you, but uh, that's, that's what we're looking at with, uh, with perfectionism and why it shows up. Let's look at the psychology again. Here, interesting enough, purpose is very strong, right? There's a really strong driver for people. But the language, again, is defeatist language. It's not language that's going to that, that's going to really support somebody. It, it does in the context of they get things done, 
<clears throat> and they move ahead and they achieve, but at the same time, it's a, it's a compulsive, it's a, it's a, I must do this versus, you know, where I should do this. And it's a, it's, it's a forceful, uh, defeatist type of language. And again, there's a little bit of an all or nothing type of focus. So either you, you, you win or you, or you lose kind of thing. And that is not necessarily with that black and white thinking, right? That's just not necessarily beneficial because we, we all make mistakes. And the question is, is how and what you do with that mistake. If you're going to be overly critical and harp on that mistake and focus on that mistake, then you're going to miss out on the learning that's part of that whole experience. And then it's going to happen again, right? Because when we don't get the learning, it continues to happen. And then we spend more and more time and energy in that perfectionism zone, sort of, you know, in that vicious cycle. And, um, you know, the physiology aspect is often neglected in perfectionism. That's one of the things, one of the values that, that gets lost is people don't get enough sleep. They don't eat the right foods. They don't take care of themselves. So that's something that comes with, with that perfectionism psychology. So now let's do the same thing. What are the top two things that you tend to look for perfection? Right? What are the core drivers behind that? <clears throat> How is it affecting you, and what are the consequences? And on your new action, you know, what can you give yourself permission to, to look at it from an 80-20 perspective? Go ahead and write those, those things down. All right, let's move on. So one of the things before we do move on actually is just talk about procrastination and, and perfectionism that typically that, that protectionism that goes on either in, in either, there is, it is a protectionism. We think that we're protecting ourselves by either procrastinating, right? Pro protecting ourselves from that fear or performing at such a level that, that nobody can find blame <clears throat> or to, to overcome that, that, that fear of failure. And, and really the interesting thing is, is very often the very thing that we're often looking to avoid is the very thing that we're attracting with that behavior, right? So we're afraid of uh, maybe the fear of failure so we don't start something when we procrastinate. But then at the end of the day, we, we, don't, we don't get it achieved at all. And then, and then we feel defeated. We, we feel you know, in, the, in that way. So, so it's so important that the very thing that we're trying to protect ourselves from is the very thing that we're actually creating. So we want to be aware of that so that we can stay in this productivity zone. And my good friend, uh, Dr. Tom, who I'm presenting with in two weeks here in Philadelphia uh, for the Productivity Accelerator Live event, we'll talk about that in, uh, at the end, is he, he talked about you know, he's, the, the whole program revolves around a football metaphor. And so he talked about, yeah, it's like, it's like having the goalposts and you've got the kicker coming in for, you know, for the extra point and it's got to be in the zone in order for it to be a score. So you've got to be in the zone as well in order for you to feel that balance, to be able to get that time that you're looking for to do the things that you want to do versus just the things that you need to do. So let's talk about the four things that you need to focus on, those four drivers that are going to enable you to manage your state of mind, get more clarity, focus, and direction to stay in that productivity zone and to hit into those goalposts. So the very first one, and we talked about it from a, a perspective of psychology and, and perfectionism and procrastination, the first one is purpose. Why are we doing something? What's the strategy? What are the goals? You know, is it, is it, are you doing it for fun, for money? You know, what is it encompassing that, that gives it that drive and passion? And then there's the language. Number two is managing that negative self-talk and redirecting ourselves with positive language. Focus is really focusing on goals and being solution-oriented versus problem-oriented, which is where a lot of people 
uh, fall into the rabbit hole is they continue to focus on the problem and therefore they can't find the solution because they're so focused on the problem. And physiology is, you know, we understand that the body affects the brain and the brain affects the body. So, you know, let's look at each one of those real quickly. So purpose, purpose provides clarity, right, for what and why you're working on what you're working on. It provides that strategic focus so that you, you've got that big picture and you know how everything fits into that big picture. It also provides that important context drive and determination, which gives you the stamina to really work through very difficult challenges. Because, you know, when you've got that level of purpose, where there's a will, there's a way. I know that uh, Steve Linder, one of my mentors, he always asks people whether they could cross you know, uh, a busy traffic, a busy road full of traffic. And most people would say no. Well, it depends on your level of purpose. If your child was in the middle of that traffic, could you then at least make an attempt to get across that traffic? You bet you would, right? It depends on what your purpose is, and you will find your way around challenges when your purpose is strong enough and you are connected to it. And you have the ability to do that. And it provides that resilience to get you on back on track faster because we're all going to fall out of the zone from time to time. We can't live there consistently. We're, we're emotional human beings and, and that's just part of who we are. So the key is, is how do we get back on track quicker? So what about our language and self-talk? Well, our language and self-talk, it really drives our motivation up or down. I mean, think about it. When you're talking trash to yourself, you're, you're taking that motivation into the ground but you can also really psych yourself up with really positive talk with affirmations. It also affects the way that you approach tasks and decisions because we filter everything that comes in based on our self-talk and our language. So how you filter that is in essence going to determine what it means to you and then how, what decisions and behaviors are then going to come from that. So that's, this is key, right? It ultimately drives your behavior. And it's very important because you may have a really clear goal and purpose. Well, that doesn't, you know, you can say to yourself with affirmations, you know, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. But if you're filtering everything with this negative self-talk that's, that's sabotaging things, then, then you know, it's, it's just not going to happen. So you need to be conscious of what's going on with your language. Your physiology as we said, it's so important. The body affects the brain. The brain affects the body. It's all connected. So you have to be aware of what gives you energy and what depletes energy from yourself so that you can play with those reserves so you know when you need it. And, and typically, people do different types of activities at different times of day based on the amount of energy that they have at that particular time. Some people are night people. They work better and do certain functions at night. Other people better in the morning. Know what cycles and what times of day give you the most energy and what activities give you energy and take away from energy. You know, nourish the body so it can stay strong physically and mentally, right? These are all things that we know, but we don't always do what we know, right? Was it Einstein who said common sense isn't all that common? Is we think about high performance athletes, they're on specific diets that help them to perform at the highest level, to build muscle and to stay strong and to be able to build endurance. And that's what we need to do for our productivity, for our balance, for our fulfillment, for our happiness, is we need to make sure that we're eating the right foods, we're getting the sleep that we need because that's when our brain recovers and we build energy during that time. That's when we learn and get new lessons. And, you know, you've got to take breaks appropriately and recharge. You know, one of the initiatives that I love, um, Tony Swartz has this program called Take Back Your Lunch. So many people are working at their desk over lunch. And that's great. I love it that they're dedicated or, um, you know, they're – but we've got to support our people. If you are a business owner, you've got to support your people to get away from their desk. They're actually going to perform better if they go out for lunch or they do something to, to get some movement, some motion, and get out of the office. Take those breaks. They are so important. 
And at the end of the day, get rid of all the excuses. Oh, I don't have the time to make healthy foods. I don't, uh, it's easier for me just to grab that Snickers. Well, I'm telling you, it's going to affect you. So get rid of the excuses and take care of your physiology because unfortunately what happens with physiology is when it's too late, it's too late. And so you don't want to wait until it's too late. This is an area where you have to invest in yourself up front. You know it, so it's time that you put it as part of your program. And lastly, these four areas is focus. We're going to pull together all those three elements that we just talked about. So purpose, so have clearly defined objectives that you can focus on, right? And focus on that positive self-talk and quality questions. Ask yourself and others quality questions. Because if we ask ourselves a poor question, we're going to get a poor answer. If you ask a quality question, you're going to get a quality answer. It just makes sense. And I don't want to go into a lot of um, stories and examples tonight only because we don't really have as much time. But we do do a lot of that and in in-depth exercises in the live event. And we actually have one coming up in Philadelphia in two weeks. So I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. So you also want to feed your mind and body with what it needs, as we said, for performance and attention because it's going to help you focus better, right, when you're doing that. So when you're giving yourself those breaks, what we just talked about, nutrition and so forth, because if you're on a sugar high, right, and then you come down, you are not going to be in an optimal place to, to stay focused because it's actually going to act as more of a distraction than it is a focus. Or if you're hungry, right, you want to have foods that are going to support you and last you through the session of focus. Very, very important is you want to create a supportive environment that's going to support your attention on what's important. So, you know, block out, think about up front, make a list of what are the types of distractions that you typically get, and then come up with a way that you're going to mitigate those distractions. You know, put your phone away, turn it off and put it away so you don't even hear it buzz because it's a distraction and it takes you away. And we're going to talk about a couple of those tips uh, in, in just a moment. And you're going to want to create accountability. That helps you to focus too, right? If you have a specific time, specific objectives in that time, okay, I've got a timer. I'm going to work for an hour. I've got these two objectives to finish in that hour. And then you've got some sort of accountability on it where somebody's waiting for that. That's going to help you to be really solution-oriented and focus on what needs to get done. You know, and that's why procrastinators actually – um, are successful in cramming things in a really short period of time. So they can be, they can work like mad because they're extremely focused because they cut out all and any sort of uh, fluff time and they've got to stay extremely focused in that small amount of time that they have to get it finished. And there's such a high accountability because if they don't get it done by the date that they said, you know, then, then they're, whatever they might lose their job or they might not get another article in a magazine or whatever it is but these are the things that help them when they do get focused help them to get laser focus and we talked last week that there's actually three elements that make up focus because it's not just about our immediate attention it's about our strategic focus it's about our mental focus and it's about our immediate attention of focus and that's encompassed in these different elements Let's just check my email to make sure we got no questions coming in. And then we're going to talk about a couple of tips. All right, we're good. So let's talk about a couple of tips. How do we stay in the zone? Well, the first thing is, is environment is paramount. We just talked about that around focus. So let's just talk about a couple of things that you can do to control your environment to stay focused and stay in the zone. You got to, don't, don't be that email person who's constantly checking their emails. The, the latest statistic I saw was that the average employee checks their emails 36 times an hour. So do you think that's a distraction? You bet, right? And we get so many emails that, that aren't even directed at us that, that distract us and take our attention away and it's not even relevant. So you wanna put that out of office reply on to let people know you only check your emails twice a day at these times, you really want to take their issue seriously and you'll get back to them as you know as soon as you can whatever your your thing is within 24 hours or whatever it is that you say but they you're setting an expectation there 
and you're controlling your environment, which is absolutely key. You know, take all the beeping and the buzzing off the phone and the computer and all of that. You can also, as I said, a lot of the e oops, a lot of the emails that come in are um, are not even for you. They're not even relevant. So you can set up rules in your email file to separate inner office mails, for instance, which aren't urgent, or uh, client mails and so forth. And by setting up these rules, they'll already be separated into maybe ABC priority in terms of the emails that have to be answered. Another really important thing is as things that come across your desk, first of all, is it really urgent? Those people on the, the perfectionism side or the just one more thing, they tend to be people who, who things are, are urgent. Everything's urgent. I had a client, we were working together, and his biggest challenge in managing his time, because he was always uh, running late on delivering things and Oh, you know, overwhelmed and taking on too much. It's because everything was urgent to him. And this was, we, we, we made it very simple. He had to ask himself, is this really urgent? And then he had to say yes or no. And then he had to ask again, why is this urgent? What is it about this item that makes it urgent? So that he could really get clear, is it really, really urgent? Because most of the times it wasn't. And he could say, well, actually, this could be due by this date, so therefore, I could do that in two days because it's not due until Friday, right? So he was able to then plan it out better, which then reduced his overwhelm because we're only overwhelmed because we don't have a plan. When we have a plan, I mean, think about it, right? If you have a plan and you know when you're going to do it and when it's going to get done by, well, it doesn't feel so overwhelming anymore. So it's only when you've got tons of things that are being thrown at you, you feel like everything's urgent, you can't get it done. And then you just shut down. So the other thing you want to do is you want to block off these got a minute meetings. These are one of the, the serious killers of our productivity is people are just jumping in and saying, hey, you got a minute? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Uh, they come by your desk, you know, and, and that really takes you out of whatever you're working on. So schedule open office hours and the rest of the time, focus on what you've got to focus on. And if if you work in an environment where that's impossible, you know, check with your boss and see if you can go to the library. You can go somewhere that's quiet and, and outside of any types of distractions. The other thing is to avoid overload and overwhelm because, you know, the question is, is are you really overloaded or you just haven't really looked and see what it is that you could delegate and how you could delegate it? The important thing is don't plan yourself 100%. You've got to reserve time for these urgent service calls and urgent things that come up because they do, they come up. And if you don't leave any time for that, then of course, of course you're in a super overwhelmed and um, reactive mode is because you haven't left your yourself any time to deal with those day-to-day -day th things that come up like that. So these are just some high-level tips to keep yourself in the zone. So a couple tips on prioritization. People talked about prioritization being a really important aspect to them. So first of all is take all the things down that you need to do. And somebody said, well, how do I prioritize them? I'm really not sure. Well, you can do it by looking at, okay, is A more important than B? Is it more of a priority for me to get done? Is it urgent? Is it important? And, and then you can say, okay, so if the answer was B is more, more important, is a higher priority, then you can say, okay, is B or C a higher priority? So if your answer is C, now C becomes the highest priority item. And then you can go through your list to be able to see which one and compare each one. It can be done relatively quickly, and then you have a prioritization if, if you don't have a, a clear gut and understanding of which one is more, more important and, and a higher priority, that'll make it come up really quickly. And, you know, and I've done this, the simple thing I've done with, you know, in executive meetings where... They wanted to, you know, we were talking about which investments to make and there were a number of different investments that needed to be made. And so we did the same thing. We went through and we said, well, is this position that needs to be hired more important than this investment in this department? And we went through each one of the things to find out which ones were the most important and the priority of the organization. And that's how we set it up. Number two here is it's important, uh, you know, to take the time to make sure that you've got at least one important item a day that's gonna drive your long-term business goal. 
right? You've got to make that a priority in your day. So you want to feel every day like you're taking that next step, a necessary step towards meeting your goal. Because there's lots of urgent things that come up and we can live in a reactive. But the thing is, is that you're not moving forward in the things that are really important to you if you're not giving it time, if you're not planning time for it. So you have to reserve it as though it's an unmovable appointment and take that time to move you forward on those most important goals. And as we said, again, in prioritization, is it really urgent? So that's a high-level overview of the four things, the four core things that make up championship psychology that help you to get and stay in that productivity zone. Again, I said it's where efficient and effective meet, and it's that aligning the benefit to the investment. And uh, there are a few other things that are part of this because there's all in all, there's 10 essential elements that make up your time and energy management that bring you into this productivity zone and help you to avoid that stress that's on the outskirts. And, you know, I, I talk about them as the language of productivity. So you can see it's a, it's a book in, the, in all the languages. You can pick the productivity language. <laughs> And so by understanding and learning this language, it's going to enable you to be able to master yourself on that curve and stay in that zone and kick in that zone for that extra point or, or field goal person is, is to always to get into that center place by knowing those 10 core drivers that make that up. So if I may, accountability is a really important part in staying in that zone. We talked about the environment as one of the areas that you can create in terms of accountability. I want to share with you a program that I've created, which is part of the P10 Productivity Accelerator, and I've created a self-assessment that enables you to, to, to get a rating within the three major pillars of championship psychology, winning strategies, and sustainable results with easy sliders that enable you to put down what level you're at today. And the most important thing is that you're honest with yourself and that you're using the same basis for the, for the assessment that you take today to the one that you take in two weeks and then two weeks going. So by using a system like this, you're able to take something that was previously almost immeasurable and set up a baseline so that you can track your progress in each of these 10 core drivers. And uh, you know, if you go to www.p10app.com, you can sign up for a free assessment and utilize this accountability tool. The, the accountability part has a small fee to it, but the self-assessment itself to take it the first time is completely free, and it gives you almost like a, a DISC or a Myers-Briggs types of personality profile. It gives you your productivity profile. So it's pretty cool. It's the first uh, of anything like this that exists in this market. And, uh, and it's important for us to have something that we can use as a measurement because that accountability is so important for us to help stay in the zone and stay focused on the things that are most important to us. So I do have a live event coming up. I talked to you about that before. just want to give a quick mention to it. If anybody's in the Philadelphia area or wants to fly out here, I have people coming in from uh, various places, Texas, California, Florida, um, they're coming in for the event, coming up uh, on uh, October 18th and 19th. It's at the Renaissance Hotel at the airport. And uh, we're really going to, you know, a live event helps you to learn a language, just like if you were going to a country. And I can tell you firsthand because I, I lived in Switzerland for 16 years, and I was kind of like thrown in the deep end. And I didn't speak German before I went there, but, uh, you know, I learned it really quickly because I was immersed. And so I had to learn it, and I was there, and I was immersed, and I learned it because they weren't going to let me speak English at one of the companies that I worked at, so they were going to help me to um, stay focused on that. So it's the same thing. You're going to learn these 10 elements inside and out from the context of really getting into your system. So you're going to improve your overall time management approach and gain greater productivity by how you approach things differently because that's the key is that if you want to get different results, even better results, I'm sure you're in a place where you're already getting great results, but you want even better results. And you're going to get that. You're going to get greater balance, more freedom, 
and, and create that, that time to do the things that you want to do by this approach. You're going to get a real clear action plan because we're going to create it together in the workshop, in the boot camp, to get that clear action plan and leave with a, a clear clarity of what it is that you're going to be working on. You're going to increase your focus and engagement. You're going to identify that negative self-talk, which we said is so important. And it's going to help you to increase self-confidence and just increase your, your personal, I don't want to say, your, your personal balance and inner peace because you're going to know how to handle these events. And so you can deal with that stress in a much better way because we're also going to talk about those emotional triggers and how you deal with those. You're going to get a lot more clarity in a lot of different areas of your life. Um, you're going to strengthen your leadership skills, and you're going to develop some amazing accountability partners with people like yourself. I'd like to just share uh, a short clip from somebody uh, who was at the May event who just wanted to share her experience. I would recommend that everybody attend this. I think that sometimes people believe they need to be in a certain place in their life. They either believe that they are too advanced, you know, they've invested a lot of money in coaching and workshops and, and, and self-help books and whatnot, and they might think that they don't need this, and I would say, you are wrong, <laughs> you do, <laughs> this is incredible and powerful information, and one of the things that makes it so powerful and empowering is its simplicity. I was able to put into play immediately the tools that I've learned, and I am sitting there processing, knowing that my life is changing on the spot, that is such a powerful feeling. And just to be able to see a different future, a future with more hope and freedom and joy and finally the ability to break through and head toward my goals is, you know, there's just not a price tag. You just, you just cannot label that. So I, I would tell, I would encourage anybody, whether they've, they're new to workshops and have never done anything like this before, or they've invested tens of thousands of dollars, I think that this really meets you where you're at. And regardless of your background, you're going to get a lot from it. So go. So what can I say? Go. <laughs> no. So important is, is, you know, a lot of us, we're looking for that, as we said, that, that more time to ourselves, more time to do the things that we want to do, to feel free, not to feel tied down. Or So how much time would you have you know, if you save 30 minutes a day, how much time do you think that actually equates to for yourself over a year? 30 minutes a day. And that's not much, right? That's over one month a year. What could you do with one month? You could take another vacation with your family. One month of focused on, on your sales is going to double your sales if you're one of the, the key people driving your business. I just spoke to somebody the other day where, um, you know, with the amount of time that we were able to free up with him with the strategies and the approach that he was using, he was clear that he was going to be able to double his, his sales because he was taking, he was just able to take himself out of a number of different things that really weren't urgent for him to be a part of. And we were able to create that. So what is it worth to you to have that time back to do the things you really want to do? At the end of the day, I say that productivity equals profits, right? It equals profits, as I was saying, in every area of your life. It's going to equal profits in terms of financial profits, for sure. But it's also going to yield you profits in your health because you're going to have more time and you're going to also have an approach where you're going to take care of yourself better. So you're going to be healthier. You're going to live longer. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more vitality and energy to share. And that in itself is going to help you improve your relationships. And it's going to help you in every area, whether it's relationships with your children, with your uh, team, with your spouse, with your parents. This is really productivity when you, when, when you have it in the sense of not just creating widgets, but when you think of it as a sense of feeling, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of um, being in control. That's, that's what a lot of people have said is that it's not just, a, it's not about what you create. Yes, you're going to achieve a lot in that context as well, but you're going to have that, that well-rounded fulfillment. That's the profits that you're going to get. You know, I, I love this quote. It's, you know, we are born to be successful. We're just programmed to stay where we are. Well, it's time that we take charge. We take control and we 
decide and we understand what are the drivers to enable us to break those, those old patterns and that programming and put in a new program so that we take charge, we are in control, and we see the success that we were destined for. I know some people say, you know what, this is all well and good, but I just don't have the time. I can't afford to take the time to come to the event or to look through the uh, training modules or even to take the assessment, uh, which takes in all essence five to seven minutes, depending on how long you take on, uh, on the obstacles, really. You can't afford to take the time. Well, I say, can you really afford not to? Because the real question is, what will things look like in one year or in five years if things continue in status quo? And I can tell you that I've had people over the years that said they didn't have the time. And our paths have crossed over the years, and things don't look good for them. They wish that they did something sooner, right? It's, it's what a lot of people feel like with their health as well, is I wish I did something sooner because now I, I, it's gotten out of control. So think about that. Can you really afford not to? And one of the things that I say in this whole context of, you know, it, how you show up for something is how you show up for everything. So you want to take charge of your productivity because every day is game day, right? You show up every day and bring your best. It may not be the same every day, right? Our best is different every day, but every day is game day, so you've got to bring your best. 